In this tutorial, we will model a parametric bench in Grasshopper based on two curves. We'll also render the scene. You can find detailed instructions and a Grasshopper definition on the website, baharman.github.io um, backslash parametric slash bench. You can find the Grasshopper definition for this here as well. So we're going to model this bench and let's go ahead and get started. We're going to open up a new document in Grasshopper. We're going to start by creating a curve, interpolating a curve through a set of six points. So the first thing we're going to do is place a point parameter here in the parameters tab. So a point, we're gonna set this in Rhino. So right click on the point, set one point, and we'll place this at the origin, zero, zero, zero. Let's copy and paste this, say six times, well, six points total. And we're gonna edit these points. So click on the second one. Make sure in display you have the gumball turned on. So we click on the point and the gumball appears in Rhino so that we can edit this point. I'm going to move it along the x-axis and then change the height. I'm going to take the third point, move it along the x-axis, maybe change the height a bit. Fourth point, move it along the x-axis. I'm going to leave these last points lined up on the axis so that there's a nice flat part to the bench. So this will make, um, actually I'm going to dip the front of the bench down, rise up a little bit, have it dip down to make a, a place to sit, and then becomes flat. And we're going to put these into an interpolate curve. So I can look under curve, spline, interpolate, or you can double click and type in interpolate. I'm going to plug the points in as the vertices. It's red because there's not enough input yet. I'm going to shift click and drag the second point in. We can see our line now, curve, third, fourth input, fifth input, sixth input. We can see our line drawn. So let us better figure out what these curves should look like. I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this and paste it. I'm going to start drawing a second curve from these. So for all of these, I'm going the second set of points making a curve. I'm going to go ahead and drag them out a certain amount on the, um, on the y-axis. I don't need to be particularly precise for this. So what I'm thinking I'm going to have the bench do is um, get a little wider and higher at this point. So I'm making a sort of back to the seat. I don't need to make it too much. We'll start to become narrower here. And then I'll keep this last part flat. And before I worry too much, I'm going to go ahead and create a surface so I can see this a bit better. So I'm going to use a ruled surface, so surface, freeform. 
ruled surface, or you can use a loft. I'm going to put the two curves in as my input here. And now I can preview the surface I've made. If I want to edit this, I can just edit the control points and change my shape a little bit as I see fit. Maybe I want this to be longer. And so we can edit and sculpt this a little bit. Once we're happy enough with the initial shape, we can always change it later. Um, let's go ahead and start turning this into a bench. So to keep organized, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of these. So Control G, select them all. Control G will create a group. Now I'm going to label this group. I'm going to right click on it and type in a name. So this will be surface. To change the styling of this, I can right click on the group and change it to a blob outline or a rectangle outline. I like the box. You can also change the color by right clicking. Go down here to color and edit that. And you can set a default color for all your boxes, for all your groups. Now, We're ready to start the second part of this. We're going to extrude the surface to give this some thickness as a bench and then move it to the height we want. So I'm going to start by extruding. We're going to look under surface, freeform, extrude. So we place our extrude component. We need a base. This is the base surface in this case. So our ruled surface here, I'm going to connect it as the input. To my extrude. Now it's still orange because I need a direction. Which, which way are we extruding this? We're going to extrude it on the z-axis upwards by, um, by an amount that we're going to set. So I'm going to move this up on the z-axis with the unit z vector. You can find that under vector, the vector tab, vector panel, unit z. And I'm going to connect its output, the unit vector, as the direction input here. And in Grasshopper, we can go ahead and back in Rhino, we can go ahead and see this preview geometry with the thickness of the bench. At this point, I can probably go ahead and hide all of this initial geometry. Middle mouse button, select it all, middle mouse button, disable preview. So now I'm only seeing the extrusion. Now, if we want to change the thickness of this extrusion, it's by default, it's one from this unit vector. Um, I'm going to add a number slider here. Parameter. Got our number slider. What I'm going to do is double click to search and I'm going to type in um, an initial value. I'm going to make this 0 0.5. And that's going to make a number slider set to 0 0.5. Connect that as my factory. You can see the thickness of the bench resize. And I'm going to rename this to thickness so that I'm staying nice and organized and I know what my parameters are. Now, the next thing we want to do is set a height for the bench you know, above the ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this up on the Z axis. I'm going to use a move command. I could type it in here and pick move, or I could look in the um, uh, transform tab under Euclidean move. What we're going to do is move this along a vector, a direction of movement. So extrusion will be the input geometry for the move command. 
And you can see by default, we're moving 10 on the Z. If you look under motion, you'll see that the default translation vector is 0, 0, 10. So 10 on the Z axis. We're going to change that. We're going to, um, again, put in a unit Z vector. You can double click on the canvas to search and type in unit Z. Plug that in as the motion. And then we need to put a number slider. Double click, search, and let's type in, say, 3 for our height. And plug that in as our factor. I'm going to rename this to height. And I've got, I'm going to hide the preview for the extrusion. And I can see my bench seat at the approximate right height. So this, this uh, group of components looks OK. So I'm going to go ahead and group it. And I'm going to name this seat or bench seat, for example. Our next step is actually a little more complicated. Um, we're going to add legs to the bench that are based on the parameters of the height and the thickness. So what we need to do is find the start and end points of the bench. What we want to do is draw a line between the start points of both curves and the end points of both curves. What we're going to do is just um, use these points again and uh, keep things looking nice. I'm going to place new point components. So I'm going to place a new point. I'm going to drag the wire connecting this first start point to this new point. And now I've got a big messy wire, so I'm going to hide it. I'm going to right click on this point. I'm going to actually, I'm going to rename this so it's clear. Start A. And I'm going to go wire display hidden. It's going to hide this wire. See a little wireless radio symbol here. And uh, if I click on it, I'll see where it sources. Let me go ahead and um, maybe copy and paste. Uh, let's rename this to end A, and I'll connect it to this endpoint for the first curve. And I'm going to copy these and change the name to start B and end B and connect them to the start point here of the second curve and the end point of the second curve. So you can see I've got my two sets of points, start and end B, start and end A. Now what we want to do is draw a line between both start and both ends. So I'll put a line here. And we don't want to use line parameter. We want to use the line component con creating a line between two points. Remember, that's under a curve, primitive, line. So I'm going to place one. I'm going to copy and paste it again. And my first line is going to start at A and end at start B. I can see it right here. My second is going to start at the end of A and end at the end of B. You can see it there. So I've got these two lines for the base of the legs. Now, to give it the right height, we're going to extrude it up vertically um, to um, the height we set before. So we'll go ahead and use an extrude command. And we need a unit Z vector. Well, OK, so we'll plug in the line as the base. We're actually going to plug in both lines as the base. So shift, click, and drag to put the second line in. And our direction is going to be unit Z again. So we'll plug this in as the direction for the extrusion. We can see a preview with a factor of 1. 
So what we need to do next is set the right factor for this. Um, so we need to set a factor for the extrusion on the z-axis. What we want to do is use the height here. So I can plug that in as my factor. And you can see we're coming up to the right height. This is a little messy. So what I'm going to do is instead add a number parameter. So params, primitive, number. And I'm going to connect the height here to the number. I'm going to hide the wire, right click, wire display hidden. Now I'm going to rename this height. This is a nice way to start to keep your variables um, organized by group. I'm going to plug this in as my factor. You can see it's still the right height. Um, but if we look at this closely, we can see the height is coming to the base of the bench. And that's going to create some problems for us. Um, we're going to solve that a little later. What we want to do is continue on and give these legs some thickness. So we're going to extrude them again, but this time on the, um, on the x-axis. So we'll add an extrusion. So type in extrude or go to surface, freeform, extrude. And we're going to plug this extrusion in, the result of this extrusion into a new extrude. So we've extruded it on the Z, um, making it from a line into a surface. And now we're going to extrude it um, the surface on the x-axis to give it a, a thickness and become a solid. So let's add uh, unit x as our direction and we can start to see the thickness. Now before we worry about the value for this, note that um, we're not meeting the curve here because we just extruded to the height. What we need to do is extrude to the height plus the thickness. So we're going to go back a step um, to where we set the um, unit vector for this extrusion. What we want to do is add the height and the thickness. So I need to add a number parameter for the thickness first. So number. And I'm going to connect this to my thickness number slider. Rename this to thickness and hide the wires. Just keeping things neat and orderly. And now I want to add these two together. We're going to use the addition component. You can find that under math, operators, addition. So height and thickness is the inputs, A and B. The result, their addition, 3.5. I'm going to plug that in as the factor. Now you can see this extrusion is inside of the surface. But a couple more things to worry about. If I want to neaten up my wires, what I can do is double click on a wire to add a relay. And this will allow me to um, control the shape of the wire a little better, keep things a little cleaner. So we want to um, probably give the thickness of the legs the same thickness as the, um, the seat bench. So I'm going to drag the thickness parameter here. It's my input for the extrusion of the legs on the x-axis. Now this is looking pretty good, but one thing you may note is 
they're both being extruded on the x-axis this way and this edge is this end is sticking out past the bench if i want both of the um, legs on the inside of the bench then um, we need to move this one this thickness 0 0.5 on the x-axis and this one we need to move minus 0 0.5 on the x-axis so let's look at a few things here these wires that are gray dark gray and a normal thickness they are saying this thing has one value moving along it so one one locally defined value here where you see a thicker line this has multiple values so i can see the base has two lines coming into it i'll put them through a relay here um, but before that you, you see i've got two lines coming in this base has two values it results in two extrusions two legs and this is a double thick line So right now the base has two values coming in and only one direction. If I give it two directions, the first surface is going to be moved by the first direction and the second surface is going to be moved by the second direction. So what we can do is um, add a negative component here. So I can type in negative. Um, or I can pick it here from the operators. And I can put this um, in different places. I could put it right here. So I have my x vector. I've got one value coming out, um, 0.5 on the x-axis. If I plug it in here on the negative, I now have minus 0.5 on the x-axis, and I can shift and drag that in as my direction. And you see this is now on the inside. I could instead also put it back here, thickness, value, and plug that in as shift click and plug that in as a second factor. So now I've got two factors coming in on my unit X, 0.5 and 0 0.5. And you can see this thicker line here signifying that there's multiple inputs on this. Either way is fine. We've got our nice bench, all parametrically defined. If I change the thickness, the legs and the surface respond. If I change the height, um, they're connected nicely. And if I change the shape of the bench, the whole system responds. So that's a parametric definition for a bench. Let's finish uh, cleaning this up a little bit, and then we'll uh, start to pre preview um, how it can look. So let's group these and name this legs. So right, uh, control G to group, right click to give this a name, and um, now, let's start to render this straight from Grasshopper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide, uh, turn off the display for everything. So select all, middle mouse button, disable preview. And I'm going to plug both of these um, resulting geometries into a custom preview component. You can find this in the display, um, display tab. tab. Um, under preview, we're going to use custom preview here. So I'll plug the geometry from the C, and I'm going to shift and drag the geometry for the legs in as well. And I'm going to set a new color for this. Double click, and I'm going to type in color swatch spelled with a U in English style, and plug that in as our material. 
I'm going to double click on the color here to change the color a little bit. I'm going to make this, keep this gray and maybe value of 80. Accept. And there I have a preview of my bench. So the custom preview will um, render this. Um, so despite what the Rhino viewport is set at on wireframe, it's going to make um, a render view of it. Now, I'll go ahead and group that and call it preview. So if I minimize Grasshopper now and I'm in Rhino, I can keep it open too if I want, um, we can, for example, change the um, render setting here to, for example, ray traced. This is with Rhino 6, the cycles viewport renderer. And we can start to see the bench rendered with cycles in the viewport. Now, if we want to make this a little more interesting, we can add some lighting to the scene. We'll do it a very simple way with the sun. Type the sun command in. And we're going to turn the sun on, perhaps set it to here and now, and then change the um, time of day a little bit. Now, if we want to create a rendering, let's change the set it just like that. Now, if we want to um, render this with Rhino. I'm going to go back to wireframe mode, for example, and we can go here to Rhino's render menu. Before we hit render, we want to look at the settings, so render properties. What we probably want to do is set the dimensions to the viewport, then set the DPI, um, our resolution, 300 is a good choice. Quality, probably good or final. I'm going to leave it 72 draft so that this runs very quickly. And I'm going to go to render and render the scene. It's going to open Rhino's um, render window and the scan line render for Rhino 6 is going to run. When the rendering finishes, you can edit the settings here for gamma, for tone mapping, and so forth. When it finishes, you can also save it out. Your result may look like this um, with the Rhino render. If you have um, render plugins like V-Ray or Thea for Rhino, you can create nicer renderings like this. So if you have Thea installed, I'll do a quick demo of how to do that. So because we're going to be adding materials, we want to disable the preview here and um, bake this geometry to Rhino. So baking takes geometry from Grasshopper and makes it into Rhino geometry. So I'm going to bake, right click on the move component here and bake it. Default layer is fine. I'm going to right click on the extrude and bake that to bake the legs out as well. And now I can close Grasshopper. So here's my geometry in Rhino. And 
and I want to add a material from Thea to it. So I'm going to go to my Thea toolbar and I have my basic um, options here for viewport rendering, stopping the viewport rendering, saving it, um, opening the darkroom, which is what we'll use, and the content browser. So the content browser will allow me to add materials to this. Um, so let's start the render in the viewport. And the colors don't look great, so let's adjust that. Um, we want to look in our Thea render settings. I've got it added as a panel over here. If not, you can go here to Thea render settings to find it. What I'm going to do is go to in the Thea render settings, I'm going to go to the second tab environments. I'm going to set soft shadow, uniform illumination. I'm going to go to the last tab for camera, sync to the viewport. So now my view resolution is set to the viewport. Dimensions are set to the viewport as well. Um, now I'm going to add, I'll start the rendering again. We can see the bench. Now I'm going to add some materials to this. So I'm going to open the content browser. And if you've got materials installed, I'm going to add a concrete to this. I can drop, drop it on the object, or I can drop it on the default layer on the material orb, like that. And render this and see the material on it now. We can make a full rendering nicely by going to the darkroom. Um, we have a choice between the um, render modes, interactive or presentation, uh, the render engine, and um, then these are our post-processing settings. So I'm going to, we would start the rendering. It will start computing here. You can stop it um, or pause it if you need. Um, it's going to continue to improve as it runs until it finishes. Um, if you want to stop it early, you can and adjust the settings over here. So exposure, for example, filmic, standard, and changing the settings like adding contrast, uh, denoising. And when you're done, you can save this out and save it as a JPEG or PNG. All right, that concludes this parametric bench tutorial. Thank you.